going to buy me a new dress because you'll miss me I'm so much. I'm not buying you a new dress while you're away. When Adriana quit her private school last year, her relationship with her mum went from bad <laughs> to worse. Be nice. I'm always nice. No attitude. Do I ever have attitude? She seems to think because she's 16, she can come and go and do exactly as she pleases. And if I say no, she says, well, I'm doing it anyway. Um, I don't listen to my mum when she tells me what to do. So I don't see how this lady or this family is going to change me because I'm not really going to listen to what they have to say either. I would say Adriana's a princess. It takes me about two hours to get ready. What Adriana wants, Adriana gets. I can sort of always manipulate people. We went out one time and I got strangers to buy some alcohol for free. Because I'm young and when I dress up, I look good. People will just do it. She drinks every night. She drinks to the point of where she passes out. And she'll pass out in a bush and quite happily stay there. I'm not a baby anymore. I don't need constant care. She had a really serious liver infection. The doctor told me that I wasn't supposed to drink for three years, but I just drink anyway. I'm waiting for her to drink herself to death. We're going to this party and I passed out at a beach drinking green and the next minute it was five o'clock in the morning and mum was yelling at me in the hospital. The ambulance came and she was on the beach, passed out cold by herself. Anybody could have found her and hurt her. If I physically try to restrain her from going out... Don't go. I want to go with them, Mum. She will lash out at me. You don't Mum, you know to I'm going to hurt you. You don't need to go out. I call her names like she's a dog, tell her to fuck off, but usually I end up walking out and just going... You're being stupid. Bye, Mum. Bye, Mum. Bye, Mum. Bye, Mum. Go, go, go. I'm worried my daughter's going to end up on a slab in a morgue, dead. Are you crying? See ya. Feed my cat. We'll be good. I'll see you in 10 days. Yep. Love you. <laughs> Our teens aren't headed overseas. It would be embarrassing. Instead, they're being sent to Tyrone Station a property west of Charleville in remote outback Queensland. If you really love your children, you will discipline them. You will put those boundaries in place. But we have traditional values. We are by no means ashamed of that. Dad Mark is a grazier and the local pastor. Together with wife Grace, they're proud parents to 20-year-old Elizabeth and 13-year-old Matthew. Mum and Dad are firm. And there's no getting away with anything at all, really. We do believe that it is right to use a corporal punishment, you know, example of stick. You have a rule, if you don't work, you don't eat. The property work is basically the men's job. The woman's job is to support him, but she's usually in the home and looking after children and teaching the children. The Empress did roam here. We control the environment here in bringing up our children with high moral values. And they only receive Christian satellite TV channels. You wouldn't have somebody come in your house shooting everybody. We don't want children seeing things that we want to protect them from. For Adriana and Nathan, city life will be a world away. If you want to escape, it's um, nearly 30 k's to the back boundary, so you know where to run away to, is there? Shit on the floor everywhere. What a waste of fucking land. As if you don't own this. I don't know how they live out here. There's no civilization, no nothing. Hey guys. I'm Grace. Adriana, nice to have you here. Mark, Nathan, Adriana, how are you? Hello. I'm all right, how are you? Good, thanks. Welcome to Tyrone. Yeah. <laughs> what do you reckon? Red. <laughs> yes. Grab your bags and we'll drag them through the dirt. <laughs> OK, guys, you want to take a seat, eh? Oh. 
And the first cab off the rank, Adriana and Nathan, is going to be some boundaries guidelines that we live by here. Number one, we want to have respect. Are you guys respecting us and will in turn respect you? This is a drug and alcohol free zone. We have a philosophy here, and if you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, the property vehicles are to be used only under supervision. And if you're spending time together in each other's room, then the door stays open at all times. There will be consequences for not adhering to what we do here, and they'll be, they'll be severe and you won't like it. So I'm not sure if you guys have got any stuff, whether it be drugs, alcohol or smokes that you want to give to us now. Oh yeah, I've got a couple of drinks. All right, you better hand them over, right? Yep. So you guys won't mind if Grace goes through your bag now that you've handed over all your things, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we've got more drinks here. Guys, this is an example of the respect we're talking about. Honesty is a part of respecting somebody. So we freely gave our trust to you when you walked in our house. You broke that trust. So from now on, it's like, well, we don't trust you, so you have to regain our trust and that's through your behaviour this week. Um, obviously, it came loaded for a bit of a party. I think they will try to test us because... I think so. Um, Definitely. That's just a normal part of being a teenager. I think they're just a bunch of fucking country people that I really don't get along with. I don't think I will get along with them at all. I want to go home. Not really a red dirt kind of girl. This sucks. I don't know how I'm going to survive here. We've got no chance of doing shit. I still have smoke. Yeah, I know you do. I'm fucking pissed off. I'm not going to work at all. Damn, the farmers work up their ass. Well, no work, no food. Looks like this could be a hungry week for at least one of our teens. Oh, they don't even have a TV. Dude, this is fucked. The next week, though, they'll be pitching in around the property. At least, that's the plan. Don't get too close to that drum there, Nathan. Oh, that's sick. What is it? Oh. We're going to put these baits out for the wild dogs and dingoes. So we're going for a drive. So you guys want to jump up in the back? Yeah. Whatevs. <laughs> Fresh kangaroo meat here. It's disgusting. Gross and it's hot. Getting covered in dirt. Nathan, do you want to have a turn at throwing the meat out? No. no. Don't touch Adriana, it. Adriana, have a turn? Okay. Well, they should probably be doing more than what they're doing now. They're just sitting down. It isn't a hard job. I mean, you got a glove on, you're not even touching it, really. I'm not helping out because it's disgusting and it's got all, like, blood and poison on it. Hopefully the dogs will come along this track here and uh, have a good old feed. I don't want to kill no dogs. Pretty important for us out here that our sheep survive and our cows survive. It's our livelihood. The enthusiasm levels are a bit steady on the old station living. Yeah. I don't plan on lifting a finger or doing any farm work. I can't be bothered. It fucking stinks around here. I don't think I'm going to be able to handle another seven days of this, but it's so just different and depressing. Uh... Our troubled teens have been living with their new strict parents for less than a day. And already they're about to test the Ironsides house rules. Just get away from him to go to bed before I can have a smoke. What do you mean? Until then, I have to pretend I'm sleeping. Rules broken. You're both in the bedroom here together and the door's shut. Oh, that rule's just really, really ridiculous. Are you supposed to be here? Or are you supposed to be in bed? Oh, he's being serious, but... Me too. Bye. All right, Nathan. That sort of relationship we don't encourage at all in our house. 
we stated that they were not to be in each other's room with the door closed by themselves. Tonight, that rule was broken. I think it's ridiculous. I, you know, shouldn't have to set the rule in the first place. I mean, if two people are gonna get it on, they're gonna get it on. Whether you lock the door or not, they're gonna get up to shit. The Ironsides are up at 6 a.m. every day. Hey, Diana. Wakey, wakey. Okay, time to hop up. But before they start the day's work, there's the little matter of Adriana and Nathan's late night rendezvous to deal with. I think breaking a rule is serious because as we explained to the children yesterday that um, it's the trust factor that's there too. By breaking a rule, they are losing people's trust. But just so you guys know we're serious, there are going to be some consequences this morning, all right? Because she went into the room after you were supposed to be in there. Adriana, you're going to condemn all the dog's dishes and getting the scrub out, get fresh water. And Nathan, you're going to clean out under one of the dog pens. So, because if you finish breakfast, you can move the table. <coughs> He's dreaming if he thinks I'm picking up dog shit. <laughs> That's not happening, at all. Cleaning out cattle dog kennels. Jeez. It's the Got worst it. punishment on the property. Empty the waters out so we get fresh water them, and we'll get a bit of fresh water and wash them out. Oh, don't like getting dirty. Mmm. This stinks. It's like duck poo. It's not too bad. Yes, it is. It stinks. All right, Nathan. So want that one pen there really, really cleaned out good. Yeah, I don't think I really want to do that. All right. I don't really want to touch shit. No, you're going to do it, OK? No. Yep. I'll go for a walk. We'll just wait till you come back. We've got all day, mate. You having a smoke as well? Can't just meet me then, demand all these things. Doesn't work like that. Smoking, swearing, and refusing to do his punishment. That's three strikes already, and Nathan's day has barely even started. The distances here are so great, so there's no water. He's got no water with him. So it won't be long, he'll be back. We'll deal with it then. I don't feel bad at all. They're not my dogs, it's not my farm. I shouldn't have to do any of the work around here. Nathan's kept Mark waiting for more than an hour. Nathan's now made it worse for himself. We're going to do two pins, not one. And I don't think either of them is going to give up any time soon. That Mark guy's fucking persistent. Still there at the dog shed waiting. Probably thinks I'm coming back. Hey, Nathan. Yeah? Come over here. Ah, uh, go get my boys. Hey. Dude, I have to fucking wait for you. Why? Because. Go inside. When it comes to, you know, not, not doing the tasks, I suppose the next thing is to uh, perhaps miss a meal. Pretty tough, eh? One of our teens is headed for a showdown with his new strict parents. Nathan's refusing to do any work at all. It's just rude arrogance to walk off while an adult is talking to you. So you just got no respect for us at all. You just can't do what you want to, when you want to, to whom you want to, and there's no consequences. I've only known you for two days. So I don't really have any respect yet. That is your choice in that sense. But you're making it difficult for yourself because I really want you to do that and you will do it. Okay, but I'm not gonna chase you in the paddock. I'm not gonna play silly little games. Okay, so there will be no lunch today and no food on into the evening until you decide to do it. It's very important to stick to our word um, and if Mark says there's no lunch for Nathan then there is no lunch for Nathan. End of story. For Nathan it appears as though the message is not sinking in. I can see what he's doing is going to affect him in later years. 
if he doesn't change his ways, that's really what's in the bottom of my heart about it. No, I'm still not doing it. I don't care what they say. They reckon it's inevitable or something. I reckon I'll have to do it eventually. I'm just delaying, but <laughs> I ain't doing crap. Today, our teens are supposed to be helping with shearing. Instead, Nathan's now made things worse. He's locked himself in his room. Nathan, open the door. No, you're being selfish. Huh? Well, you should start giving. It's not just about you. Oh, whatever. I think we physically go and pick him up out of bed. With brute force, um, we just have to leave him lay there. That's what he chooses to do. I feel a bit disappointing, like we're supposed to be doing all of this stuff together. So I'm shearing sheep by myself. I don't really think I should have to do it, but we'll do it anyway. Oh. I've never done hard work in my life, but I guess I'll have to do the eat. Okay. That's it. Beautiful. Adriana's going great with the shearing. First time, I think, for her. She seems to be participating quite well, enjoying the sheep and the wool. Yeah, doing really well. Okay. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's fun just playing with like the little lambs and stuff. Forgot about what I was wearing. Hello, little one. My white shirt's now brown. Doesn't matter though. This is actually pretty fun. Back at the homestead, Nathan's finally emerged from his room. But not to help out. You can hold it? Yeah. Wash <laughs> his legs up, grab his legs. So. <laughs> You are my best helper. My best helper, hey? You are my best helper. Yeah, your best helper. Great job. I'll get that stuff. Who's in our car? That's up. Oh. Nathan. Oh, it's not, is it? Oh, no way. It's a kilometre to the front gate, and if Nathan drives past it, he'll have more than just the iron sides to deal with. If he goes out and gets on the main road, it definitely becomes a police runner. The boredom here is crazy, so you've got to do crazy things to entertain yourself. And if you thought things were bad before, just wait till he gets back. What are the consequences going to be? They can try to make me do things, but that's not going to work. The worst consequence is maybe locked in my room. Well, Nathan, that could be just for starters. Where's the keys, son? They're back over there. Where were they? Um, they were in your room. Why did you go to my room? To look for the keys. Get up now. <laughs> you don't dare touch anyone's handbag. Ever. I didn't touch a handbag. Don't go to anyone's room privately and touch their stuff. Handbag, keys, nothing. What you've actually done, Nathan, is you've stolen. I'm just doing I am going to. Ring the police now, right now, and tell them that you have been staying with us, have gone to Grace's handbag, taken the keys out of her bag, and driven the car. Right? Mm -hmm. You came into our house, we gave you our trust, we opened our home to you, and you've come and you treated us like this. I didn't steal your What are you going to get out of it? I didn't steal it. So why did you do it? Um, I was bored. I really is. There's like nothing to do out here. There's lots to do for you. We're waiting for you. I don't but it's no good you sitting here being bored and then going getting yourself in trouble and doing something illegal. Why? Because you don't want anything to do with the family? We have shown you respect and being very gracious to you and this is the way you treat us. Well, usually yeah. I wouldn't be in the middle of nowhere, so I wouldn't be so bored. You didn't <coughs> have to be bored. That was your choice, Nathan. It all comes back to your choice. <laughs> 
but there's nothing to do out here. We just want to report this, that the young fella has actually found the keys in my wife's handbag in our home here. He's a teenager just staying with us. Nathan, come and stand right here. Stand right there. Thank you. Have you got anything to say to Grace and I? Yeah, I didn't steal. Like, I had no intention of, like, literally stealing it and going away. It is stealing, taking someone's car. It is stealing when you take the keys out of a lady's handbag. It is stealing. I'm not mucking around, son. Yeah, I know. Does the police already have your name written down in the notebook in town? Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to come and visit you in a few years' time behind bars. Now, don't smile. I don't want to do that. Find I wouldn't go to jail for that. It happens all the time. And we have had young people in our home that have come here waiting to go to court. They're waiting for a place in boys' home because they have already been through court or a delinquent centre and places like that. We've had the boys like that here. We don't live out here in isolation and don't know what's happening out there in the cities and in the towns because we work with young people from those places all the time. They want all the pleasures of being adult, but they don't want any of the responsibility. You can't have both. And it's sad to see what you're doing to yourself. Even for this week, you've decided to make it hell for all of us. I think that's the saddest thing. Grace and I do care for you, and you are a good man. But this carrying on will get you nowhere. I didn't see it as that serious, because it was like only like right there. It's serious. It's really serious. Um, yeah, I do apologise for it. Are you going to keep <coughs> rebelling and refusing our authority? I suppose not. Or are you going to come and get involved in our family activities? Well, I can get involved. So you might just need to give Mark and I time now to think and talk to each other about the police matter so we can make our final decision. Mm -hmm. Nathan's not the only one on the receiving end of some home truths. Adriana has been given a message from her mum. Hello, my baby girl. I hope your new family is treating you well and you are having a whole new experience. I really want things to change when you come home. I want us to be able to talk to each other and for you to listen to me and realise that I'm not being mean by saying no to you. Adriana, when you say stop talking and you don't love me, it breaks my heart. You really hurt me when you go out drinking on weekends because you become a completely different person to the wonderful sweet girl I know you are. To the wonderful sweet girl I know you are. It really scares me when you drink and then pass out. I take the phone to bed waiting for a call to come saying you've been hurt or in an accident. As your mother, I beg you to please stop drinking. Adriana, I want so many wonderful things for you. I want you to know that I love you very much. I can't wait to see my beautiful girl. Mum. My mum's always been there for me. Um, because she was a single parent, it was just always her. I always wanted to have my dad in my life, but he will never be there for me. I've always held it against her because I didn't have a dad. Um, but it wasn't her fault. She's worried that I'm going to get her. Because of your health or because of the people you're mixing with? Because of the people and my health. You're so beautiful, Adriana. Yes. Not only on the outside, but your heart's beautiful. And it would be a pity to think that in a few years, because you kept drinking, that you'd be in a hospital or something worse had happened to you. I 
just did it so that she would stop caring and then I wouldn't feel like I'm letting her down. Mums will always care no matter what we do to them. It's your favourite spot? Mm. Because of yesterday's attitude, I'm going to get you to clean out the third, underneath the third pen as well. I thought it would be a good time for you to um, come over and hook into it. I just, I just thought I should just do it. Mm. The boy who vowed not to lift a finger has finally given in. How do you poo so much? That's just wrong. Break her out. Was it too bad, eh? No, it was a lot easier than I actually expected. The consequences for going to Grace's bag and driving our vehicle, you can't pay that consequence. Wouldn't matter if you had six of these to do, because I'm going to just forgive you. End of story, finished. And you're all done. I didn't really want to see the boy have a criminal record. Uh, I think he's better than that. I mean, prisons are full of people being penalised and it doesn't make him better people. So forgiveness is the way to go. The Ironsides have dropped any police action against Nathan. But let's just hope their forgiveness is not misplaced. There's no farm work for our teens today. Grace is taking them an hour away into Charleville. We're meeting a group called the Aussie Helpers. They give parcels of food and presents to people that have gone through drought and all that sort of stuff. Today we're getting some hampers together to take out to a small community a couple hundred k south of here. If you just want to maybe grab one each and wander into the shelves. Kinda. I do charity work every week and I think it's very important to the life of the community. I think it's great that Adriana and Nathan would see this side of things. I feel like Santa delivering hampers to families in an area hit by severe drought for most of the last decade. Days like today are really important here in the outback. It's been pretty dry and it's pretty rough for them. So us coming here today and bringing some goodies just to help them out and just show that we are with them and we understand what they're going through, I think it's really important. Hi, everybody. There are dozens of families here. Some have come from remote properties as far as two hours away. It hasn't been much rain for the last eight or nine years. It's been a bad drought, and it's good for all the children to come together and meet because they don't see many children, not like in the city. And this is their opportunity once a month to come together and actually um, yeah, interact, which is really great. Yeah. Hello, little one. Out here, everyone has to think about everyone because if they don't think about like everybody else, then like the community won't survive. They sort of seem to worry about the important things like food, rain, all that stuff. And yeah, that's made me think a little bit, you know, I don't want to be so like, self-absorbed. My mum loves the bush. Does she? She loves it. So you take care of your mum? Um, yeah. You're a good son? Yeah. <laughs> you lying. And this is Sunny. No. <laughs> you only got one mum. No, I suck miserably at tennis. It does feel good to sort of buy food and just support for someone that needs it. In the city, you find a lot of people are more focused on themselves and getting themselves places. Out here in the country, 
You find a lot of families helping out other families and you know, everyone sort of helps each other to get jobs done. It's always a good feeling to sort of make someone happy. Waiting back at the Ironsides property, this time there's a letter for Nathan from his mum. To my darling son, Nathan, it's always only been you and me, mate. I think at times it's been really hard on both of us. Over the past 18 months, your personality and behaviour has changed so much it scares me. I feel as though I don't know you. We had such great communication and now I seem to be talking to myself. What happened? It worries me that we don't talk anymore. Nathan, you're so secretive about everything and that confuses me. I don't know what's going on inside your head. You treat me with no respect. You talk at me instead of to me. There's no manual for being a parent and I'm trying really hard. I do make mistakes and I'm sorry. I'd like us to start working together in rebuilding our relationship and be able to start communicating better. You're my pride and joy and I miss you dearly. I love you so much and I'm looking forward to you coming home. All my love, Mum. I feel pretty shit about how I've been treating her. And I'm the only person she has, so she must feel like she sort of has no one. Coming here, they care for one of those to help each other out around the home. Instead of something that would be good to bring back into my family with me and my mum. I have to be active in a way to sort of fix it. I can't just leave it up to her. Saturday morning, and Adriana's already getting stuck into her chores. Not bad for a girl who would normally be sleeping off a hangover right now. Today's the first day in about four years that I haven't worn makeup. So, go. <laughs> Usually, it just helps with that little bit of extra confidence. <laughs> and today, I feel sort of confident without it. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not missing alcohol in the parties at the moment. My mum's the one. I'm just finding more ways to have fun. Being around animals and being with family, you just find new ways to care about things. Whew. I'm puffed now. <laughs> I believe I've seen Adriana grow and change because just her conversations now, and I believe that they are to be genuine. She's saying that she wants to mend the relationships with her mum and others. And that's positive because you don't have to say that. Nor do you have to go away and do that. So to us, that's encouraging. Still early days yet, what she does with it, but we hope that she follows through. The week-long stay in outback Queensland is almost over for our teens. There's definitely been some hard times. Um, it hasn't really been an easy week. Their life isn't for me at all. They love the country life and that's for them. But I'm glad I eventually got myself out there and sort of tried things that I usually wouldn't do. Oh, there it goes! I think Nathan was determined not to enjoy himself, and that made it a little bit hard. Oh, it burns his sunburn. Yeah, that's that right. <laughs> but the last few days, he has relaxed. I'm having a fire away. I think Nathan has probably and hopefully learned some things that'll help him become the. The great man that's already inside of him that needs to come out. <laughs> We're feeling pleased about the way the week's gone and the way Adriana and Nathan both responded to us and our environment that we live in here. And we're feeling a little bit sad that it's over so soon. Tomorrow, Adriana and Nathan will go back to their old lives, hopefully with a new attitude. After a week of living with strict parents in outback Queensland, our teens are ready to go home. I hope they'll always remember this experience and see it as a positive experience in their life, like a fork in the road where they've chosen to take the best road. I wrote you a letter to say thank you for sort of having me and, yeah. Oh, thank you, Adriana. You have to wait till I leave. Okay. <laughs> nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. They are both great young people with lots of potential. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope the future's big. Safe trip. Thank you. I hope the future's bright. 
I hope they can fulfill all their dreams. I'm definitely going to miss them. Even though me and Mark didn't get along that well, it was still kind of sad leaving. It's a letter from Adriana. Thank you for all that you've done, Grace. You've taught me to be kinder to my mum. You have shown me that it's not hard to help around the house and I should do it more often. You are one of a kind. To Mark, thank you for spending time with me. I've never had a father figure. I can see now that there is more to life than drinking and partying. I want to actually become something and do something with my life. I make a promise here and now that I won't let you down. Love always, Adriana. That's so nice. I suppose when I get home, I hope I can be better with my mum. We just hope we can have that communication that we used to have. I think it'll take a bit of time to sort of build mum's trust. She'll sort of think it'll be short term. I've just got to stick it out and prove to her that I can do it. I'm hoping that the break between us will bring us closer again. He seems to have lost his way. And I'm hoping with this break, it might bring him back. Hey. Hey, honey. <laughs> How's your trip? That was good. Interesting. Interesting? Um, it was very isolated. Like, one of their rules was if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> so, <laughs> I missed out on lunch a little bit. <laughs> so, did you miss me? Yeah, I did miss you. Yeah, it was, uh... I missed you too. <laughs> I think I definitely take Mum for granted. I think I've pretty much taken her for granted my whole life. Yeah, that's definitely something I want to change. Um, she deserves the respect. Could I give it to her? I want to do lots differently when I get home. I just don't want to worry about what other people think about me. I sort of didn't have respect for myself before I went away. And knowing that I went away and I did all of the different things, it just gave me a little bit more confidence in myself. And knowing that I've changed as a person, it's just a good feeling. changes just a little bit, even if her attitude towards me has changed, I'll be really happy. That's what I'd like the most. Look at the sun. Yeah. I took lots of photos for you. I just when we first got there. Oh, it looks very dry, doesn't it? That was a baby lamb. I fell in love with it. It was so cute. The big sheep. I helped shear all those. She seems to have really enjoyed it, so I'm very proud of her. I'm, I'm really proud and happy that she had a go. So how do you think you'll change now you're home? I don't want to drink anymore. Really? You're not going to drink anymore? No. Promise? Promise. Not drinking anymore. She seems to have done a lot of soul searching while she's away. Adriana seems a lot more relaxed, a lot more happier within herself, a lot more calmer. So I hope, I hope that she stays like that. 